we're going to be plotting points on the polar plane. So um, I've always found this to be slightly confusing, and it's silly because it isn't. But it's because it's so very different than plotting. For me, at least, it feels different than plotting on the rectangular plane. So what we're going to be doing is just making sure we understand it. So first of all, most polar graphs you look up will look very similar to this one. This is one. Here, this inside circle, there's two. There's three, four, five, six are the dark ones. Nine is dark. So that's the idea. So as we go out, those circles represent the first radius. These lines, or radii, emanating are my angles. Okay. So since we're in radian mode for all of these points, this is pi, pi half. And here's pi, and here's 3 pi. This is 2 pi, or 0. This is pi 6, that's pi thirds, and so on around, um, because each of these represents an 18th. Now to find the fourth, which this one asks me for, four, 4 doesn't go into 18, so there's not actually represent, a representation of the fourth. But this is where pi fourths is. Remember, this is pi 6. And this one's pi thirds. And so my fourths are in between some grids. So those are the fourths. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and try to plot the first given point. We're going to label these points, by the way, as A, B, C, D, so we can talk about them in that way. And as we plot, we'll label. So um, we're going to start with A, which is 3 and pi thirds. So we move from the radius three radius units out here to this first dark circle. And then we move two pi thirds. That's pi six. There's pi thirds. There's A. Straightforward plotting. I'm going to go ahead and do B for you as well because B is funky with the fourths. So we go to five. And then we move to pi fourths. So there's one pi fourths, two pi fourths, three pi fourths, four pi fourths, five pi fourths, and 7 pi fourths. Now, if you have those memorized, it's going to go much easier if you remember, oh, yeah, 7 pi fourths is in the fourth quadrant. It'll be easier. But if you don't, you can always count. It's no big deal. But fourths are harder to count. Keep in mind you're counting the halves and pi and the 3 pi halves as you go around with fourths. Um, so that's B. I'm going to go ahead and also do C since it's got that negative in front of it. And this is where I used to get really lost because it kind of confused, well, it completely confused me. So um, it's not confusing. It just feels weird and awkward. So negative 8 is this way. So moving from the origin, I'm on this circle. That's the negative 8 circle. I know it's also the 8 circle, so it's a little funky. But if I move to the angle 2 pi thirds, so there's 1 pi thirds, and here is 2 pi thirds. Um, this is not negative 8 and 2 pi thirds. That's positive 8 because I move positively away from that. Negative 8 is over here away from that. So that's point C. Does that make sense? So it's moving this way. I'd like you to go ahead and try point D. And it shouldn't take you very long. Go ahead and do that. Okay. So, hopefully you have an answer. If you don't yet, that's cool, too. We're at 6. There's 1, 6, and that's my first dark line. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I like 6 the best. They're easiest to count. Then I get to go back to my origin and go negative 7. No, excuse me, negative 4. Negative 4 this way, and that's point D. So, you can see where all of those landed. Plotting is not that hard. Next we're going to practice some more converting. Um, and so you'll notice the first set are in degree mode and we're, we're going from polar to rectangular which means we're going to use the following two formulas. x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta which we've established ages ago so we're just reminding using those two. So with a calculator that is in degree mode for A through C, I'm going to do this calculation. 1 times the cosine 
of 330 degrees. And y will be 1 times the sine of 330 degrees. Then I will grab my calculator to do those calculations. So I got with my calculator 0.866 and negative 0.5. Now I'm going to try to not use um, these decimals. The decimals are fine, but 330 degrees and 0 0.866. I recognize that and I'm not a hundred percent sure what it is but I know how to use my calculator to figure out what it is so I'm gonna go ahead and try the square root of 3 over 2 because that's one of the numbers and it's associated with um, 30 and 60 so let's see yep that's the same answer so by using my calculator and I wish I could show you on the computer calculator but it doesn't have sine and cosine so anyway this is equal to the square root of 3 over 2 of course this is negative one half And so A becomes um, radical 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. So I'd like you to go ahead and try B and C. I'll have answers for you in just a minute. Go ahead and try B and C, and then we'll do D together. Make sure you pause your video before you try. My calculator popped out these approximate decimal answers of 2, of, for B, of 3.46, comma, 2 and for C of 1.1.67. Now, both of these angles, this is 30 degrees, this one's based off 60, actually. And so, I, if this was a 1, like this was back here, I'd have the square root of 3 and 2 and 1 half. And so, you'll notice this one must have the 1 half in it because I've got half of 2, and this one must have the half on the Y because I've got half of 4. So, with that in mind, I did 4 times to figure this number out. I did 4 times the square root of 3 over 2, and the 2, and that became that. And this one I did 2 times the square root of 3 over 2, and I got the square root of 3. So that's just one way to kind of shortcut around back to it. But the decimals at this point are perfectly acceptable. I'm just trying to show, trying to show you if I did ever ask for them in exact form how to do that. Um, we're going to continue with part D. And now we need to switch our calculators to radian mode. So make sure you do that before you start anything or you're going to get the wrong answer. You're going to get really frustrated. Um, and so I'm still using the same formula. So I'm going to have um, 3 times the cosine of pi 6. And this time I'm going to try to do this without the calculator. And then I'll also have 3 times the sine. Of pi 6. Now, of course, you can use your calculator. I'm going to use my calculator to check me when I'm done, but I'm trying to do it without it. So at pi 6, which is 30 degrees, the cosine is the square root of two, 3 over 2. So this becomes 3 times the square root of 3 over 2. This becomes 3 times 1 half. And so my answer for part D will be 3 radical 2, comma 2 over, excuse me, 3 radical 3 over 2 comma um, 3 over 2. And um, that will give me my answer in um, rectangular form. Now, decimal form, this would be, of course, 1.5. That one I can do without grabbing my calculator. The other one, I have no idea what it is, but I'm going to grab the calculator in case that's what you would like to do, cosine of pi 6. Make sure to put pi 6 in parentheses. And I get 2.598. And just to make sure that that's the same as the answer I got without the calculator, I'm going to do 3 times the square root of 3 divided by 2, which gives me the exact same answer. So I am right. And But again, whichever way works for you, go ahead and try E and F, and let's see what you come up with. I got negative square root of 2 times the square root of 2, comma square root of 2. And you, if you use your calculator, you got negative 1.412 something and positive 1.412. And then here, 1.5, same answer as this, just in reverse, except that this needs to be negative, excuse me, but in reverse. So, which is why when I made decimal spat these out, I just put those up. 
my calculator. So just something to keep in mind. That's converting from polar to rectangular. In our next video, we will continue with rectangular to polar.